So in your presentation at MLConf, as well as in a Medium article, which we will link to in the show notes, you compare this transition uh, in natural language processing to going from prehistoric to the Bronze Age um, uh, of human history. And so can you elaborate for us on what you mean by that and what you talked about in, at MLConf? Sure. Um, it's a very broad topic, but just to give a little bit of a personal reference, I started my career in data science about seven, eight years ago. And back then, if you look at all these subdomains within machine learning or AI, whether it's computer vision or NLP or other methods, they're kind of like moving along in a, at the same pace, right? Um, so if you um, ask any data scientist back then, oh, you're working on NLP, uh, what methods are you using? You're going to be hearing words like uh, TF-IDF, I'm doing structural topic modeling and all that. Um, but things really started to change, I would say, since 2018. And that's what I call like we're entering Bronze Age and we see <laughs> this huge explosion that happened in NLP. And the artifacts generated by that have since actually been benefiting all of the subdomains within AI. And they're converging in terms of the methodology that you're using. So... Um, I don't know for our audience if you've heard of anything like uh, Elmo or BERT or GPT-3. I bet you have because they're like out there, right, <laughs> in every single news article. So what's really underneath are uh, large language models. Um, so you might ask what are language models? These are actually um, usually deep networks that are able to encode amazing amount of information about uh, what I call human knowledge, but represented uh, in text or voice, right? And we've seen um, with the effective way of encoding information that is really a breakthrough in NLP, now that has been carried over to works in computer vision. And we are seeing um, increasingly multi-model generalist. There's actually a paper that just came out of DeepMind, I believe, uh, May 12th, uh, that it talks about a generalist agent, which is a uh, decoder-only transformer. And we're going to talk about that in a bit, what are transformers. Um, but it's a big transformer that is trained on vision, text, and also uh, control environments. So a lot of game playing, like Atari games and all that. It's trained in a multi-model way, and um, all of these tasks are handled by the same set of weights. Um, and it, it is for that reason, it's called a generalist. So you're seeing like uh, the breakthrough that happened in LP has uh, transferred into all the other fields that have enabled increasing generalizability, which really is an early sign of AGI, in my opinion. Wow. So what you're saying is the transition from the uh, prehistoric age mm -hmm. to the Bronze Age was the development of these large NLP models, which typically are transformer models. Mm -hmm. um, and so transformer is a particular kind of uh, component that we can include in a deep learning model architecture. And so these large NLP transformers, they around 2018 started to become prominent. Architectures like you mentioned, Elmo, and now more recently, GPT-3. Um, they transformed not only natural language processing, but lots of other fields like machine vision. And we're starting to see these multimodal models that in your view are a step towards AGI, artificial general intelligence, or an algorithm that has all of the learning capabilities of a adult person. Um, That's right. Yeah. Wow. And this very problem starts with um, representation of information, right? Or, or representation of human knowledge, which in the prehistoric time in NLP, <laughs> uh, it, we're talking about a bag of words, right? This uh, right. high dimensional space where each word in the vocabulary is its own dimension and it's encoded as zeros and ones. So it's very sparse. And there is no innate relationship among them. 
and we kind of force that relationship statistically by we by looking at distribution of words in documents. Now that is prehistoric, and the limitations are pretty obvious because if you think about how our brain represents knowledge or information, there is a lot of association between words. Right,、mm -hmm. every word carries with it a context. Like the famous example in NLP would be、uh, the bank of a river versus if you go into a bank to deposit money. And、mm -hmm. we know the bank is different, but in the early days when they're represented as bag of words, there's only one embedding、uh, for every single word.、Uh, so we we know obviously something is missing. With the Stone Age, which we haven't talked about,、uh, that started <laughs> off by Uh, word to back and doc to back, and they're still popular right, right now, right? That started in two thousand thirteen, and you will start to see this distributed representation of words. And what that means is simply,、um, if you've learned a, a foreign language、uh, or done like English exercise, there's the, those closed tasks where you mask out a word and you're asked to fill it in based on the context. So that is exactly what distributed representation is. You are representing a word by its context, and when we start to do that and train even a very simple model, like in the case of word to whack, it's a single layer neural net. Could not be more simple, right?、Uh, it's still able to capture very interesting information、um, in the syntax and and the meaning. Uh, I believe for a while there are a lot of articles giving an example about this equation where you look at king versus queen and man versus woman,、right. and you can do this、uh, semantic、um, subtraction or addition in the、mm -hmm. vector space、mm -hmm. to hop from like the conceptual universe,、mm -hmm. right?、Mm -hmm. And people are amazed by how、uh, a very simple neural net are able to encode those information. Yeah. Uh, but that re really is the start of、uh, the power of distributed representation. So that is when、um, the scaling law kicks in, right? So with the Stone Age, we're really laying the foundation of now we're able to represent a word by its context. So we got context-aware embeddings of words.、Mm. Now going into Bronze Age. Um, instead of a single layer neural net, we have evolved into really deep neural networks that can be used to encode information. Because、um, if you think about how scale impact the performance or capability of models, it's、uh, useful to think about the、uh, I guess biology、uh, analogy. Like if you compare、uh, a sea worm versus a, a frog versus a jellyfish versus an octopus and then a human、uh, or elephant. If you think about the amount of neurons and the synapses in a in a person's brain, that number does matter, right? Even if the mechanism is almost the same, but the sheer number of connections that you're able to use to encode information and to retrieve information that is very important. So.、Um, And you will see that this trend has continued and will continue、uh, from this point on、um, uh, five ten years. That is actually a a big piece of the、um, the AGI. I feel is to continue climb up this curve of the scaling law, and、mm -hmm. we, we might talk a little bit more about that in, in a bit. But coming back to the Bronze Age, I think <laughs>、um, really what has happened there is. We take the context of where embedding that idea. We made it.、Uh, we we scaled that up, right? We're able to encode information in huge networks that now have hundreds of millions of bits, and it has、um, evolved very quickly. Because if you look at、uh, the starting of two thousand eighteen, you know, with BERT, we're looking at、uh, hundreds million, and then. If you look at now how many parameters we have in these supermodels, you're looking at 540 billion and above.